How to Prevent a Civil War V1. So this is the first version I'm releasing of this experiment. We have not done this yet. This is just my proposal. And the fact of releasing it to you all to this community is to help you do something similar or give me feedback on how this lands for you or to otherwise engage in a dialogue amongst ourselves before we go out and try this. And what I'm about to present is based on many different facilitations I've done over the years, as well as some of this reading I'm doing on mediation and talking to a lot of other facilitators. Though I do have to say, many people, professional facilitators, who I've talked to about this, are really quite skeptical that something like this would work, or think in order for this to work, it would have to be done over a much longer time period. And so this is actually quite uh, controversial or bold or daring or dangerous or unlikely to succeed, depending on how you look at it. But And you have the doc, but I'm just going to go over it in case you prefer to hear it instead of read it and maybe provide a little bit of commentary. So the motivation, as you probably know if you're listening to this, is to use conflict to build community or use conflict to build connections between individuals. The point of the gathering is to see the humanity beyond someone's positions. Even with, and I guess especially with, the most controversial and divisive issues of our time. So instead of avoiding the conflict to keep the peace and avoiding the confrontation, the idea is to go through it and understand how these issues can actually bring us together. So in order to do that, we have to head toward the issues, but with a radically different attitude so we don't end up in a shouting match or uh, throwing plates across the table kind of thing. And so in order for that to work, the goal of this gathering has to explicitly be not about convincing anybody of anything or educating anybody or informing anything. There can't be any right answer or like, oh, well, let me teach you how to see this issue differently. It has to be totally horizontal and non-normative. So the goal is to understand how I got to the beliefs I have and how you got to the beliefs you have, even if those beliefs are totally different. And my hope is that there would be some level of click of, oh, shit, if I grew up the way you did and I had the experiences that you did, I have a high likelihood of ending up with the beliefs that you have. So humanizing it, rationalizing it, as opposed to the only way you could believe that is if you're crazy or you're inhumane or you hate babies or whatever else that we think about the other people. So here's how I see the event going down. I'm imagining a small group. I'm imagining it being in a comfortable, casual place like my living room. And I'm imagining it lasting around three hours. And because I come from this hospitality oriented culture, I imagine like giving people food and drink when they come in and having everyone be um, comfortably seated, seated in a circle and just the opposite kind of vibes of a sterile classroom type, type event. So each event would deal with a specific controversial issue, but in a carefully structured way I'll, that, that'll actually come in. The whole event is not directly approach the issue, but the issue is the reason why people convene. So it's known in advance, but not addressed directly. So for a quick visual, I think I went over this perhaps, but you can imagine 12 people seated in a circle in a somewhat comfortable fashion. I would love for it to be on the floor. I think a lot of people in my community, that would not work for them. So I don't think we'll do that. But at any given point in time, this is a really important part about the, the circle is that we're, there's no arguing. At any given point in time, there's like one person sharing and the other people are listening. And more than that, the paradigm is that there's no responding. So it's not like I listen to you and then I'm preparing my arguments and how I'm gonna refute what you're saying and then I'm gonna say it on my turn. And it's not gonna be that way, in my hope, because the things that people are saying, if I ask the right questions and people play the game, are irrefutable because they're coming from their personal experience. So they're not about their facts that they come with from their little AI chat rooms or from um, their opinions about things about what should or should not happen on the policy issue, but really like, what is my relationship to this? How is I affected by this issue? Why do I care so much? Which are, should be irrefutable. So I should just be able to like, listen, not be triggered, not be defensive, not find some fundamental incompatibility with what you said and who I think. I am. We'll get more into that later. But here, here I am diverging. The point here is just to talk about how this would actually like unroll. So 
let's say the event starts at five o'clock. Maybe it goes from five to eight. Uh, the doors would open at four thirty. People could come in, get settled, get something to eat or drink, make a little small talk. Um, but by five o'clock, everyone would be seated, and the host facilitator, in this case me, maybe in your case you, would give an official welcome, have all the ground rules, which I haven't determined yet. I have some ideas, and then an overview of what will happen. So basically, give like a really quick but informative overview like what I'm about to do in this in this little episode here. So that's a reminder. I need to write that welcome script if we can take this project further. And I don't know the full set of ground rules in this moment, but confidentiality would be would be a big part of it, I know, so people could feel comfortable being vulnerable. And nothing about this is going to be like reported to anybody else or in the newspaper or anything like that. Um, everyone there being a participant I think is an important part of the vulnerability as well. So no one's just coming there to like observe and not participate. Uh, we'd focus on this sharing from the eye, sharing from the personal experience, and explicitly talk about the role that facts and opinions have in the dialogue, which is that they're not really helpful. Um, and so if you notice yourself getting into opiniony territory or facted territory, then um, the facilitator may, may choose to help you. And then that would be another ground rule is agreeing that that's what the facilitator is there for just to help people stay on track. Um, so we, you know, we'd have the ground rules, we'd get a sense of the process. We'd say it's going to be four rounds. Um, in each of the rounds, as I mentioned before, uh, there would be no interruptions. Everybody would have the same amount of time to speak. So I don't know what it, maybe it depends on the amount of people, but if there's 12 people, uh, perhaps three minutes, that's 36 minutes around, you know, with a little bit of extra time for passing the baton between people. And there's four rounds that probably ends up around three hours. It could be that some of the rounds are shorter and some rounds are longer, but it would be something like that. And then after you finish speaking, you can choose someone else to, to go after you. And we do it that way until everybody finishes, remembering that at no point uh, are we supposed to respond. It's really just like, okay, I'm going to share like my feeling about this question. Uh, one, one thing I like to do after presenting the question is to give everyone a couple of minutes to reflect on it because I notice what happens otherwise is everyone is just scrambling be like oh I got to get my answer ready before I get called on and there's a lot less listening that happens if we're thinking about our answer so it's nice to give the group a couple of minutes to, to jointly and silently reflect and that way everyone is comfortable and then I also just usually set a expectation that if you haven't figured out what you're going to talk about when it comes to you we can all just like sit silently for a while while you, while you come up with it and that's um that's fine too so four rounds each round have a different question the prompts would get progressively deeper so it's almost like this is a journey like a little walk through the, the woods or something and in the beginning it's pretty chill so round one might be something about what we share it could be more superficial you know based on connection that we have if we all live in the same area it could be like what do you love about living here why did you live here uh, it could be something else if there's some theme of what, what brings the people together. Uh, and so there's an opportunity for people to go deep, but there's not a push where in round two, there's going to be a serious push because people are still feeling out the space. They don't know how comfortable they are. And it, even just, I mean, maybe for me, it's just hearing people's voices and hearing non-judgmental things come out of people's voices is the most important thing about Ron one. It's like, how do I know I can be safe? I know I can be safe because every person I've heard every person speak and they didn't try to attack me. And that's how I know like, okay, maybe I can share something real. So round one is just, it's more like innocuous and the actual underlying motivation is to allow the nervous systems to, to calm down. So round two, and this is an opportunity. This is the invitation to vulnerability. It's an opportunity for the participants to share a little more about their lives. So it could be something like, hey, what's a tragedy you've experienced recently and how are you handling it? It could be, what's a challenge you've had this year? Um, it could be that we post a list of values on the wall and pick one and tell a story about a time you've sacrificed something to uphold that value or where you failed to uphold that value even though you wanted to or where you had to make a trade-off and it was difficult for you. Uh, but something that allows people to tell a story about their life that uh, involves a little bit of challenge or difficulty. Another question I heard recently that I really liked is, what's something that we could never know about you just by looking at you? 
or or I would want it to be a little more like, what's a profound experience? What's something that's changed your life that we could never tell um, just by looking at you? And again, this this gets out of, all right, we all are coming in with stereotypes, especially we're like, oh, have these people who don't believe the same thing I do, to really just blow blow that open, you know, trying to build connection, get beyond the nervousness and give people opportunities to be surprised, to be compassionate, um, and to, to see how these commonalities are going to emerge, shockingly, usually, I would imagine, um, as well as these points of empathy and compassion. And this is all, of course, like building the groundwork for being able to really share something that would ordinarily divide us, but in a way that will actually connect us, which is the goal. So that's round three, and this is kind of like the main dish or the meat for those of you who eat meat. And so now that we've started to see each other as human people, we want to approach the conflict in a way that reinforces that humanity rather than subtracts from it. So in, in this example, I think of like gun control or gun rights, uh, we would not be asking if there should be a constitutional amendment for gun control or what is your thought or opinion on the best way to protect children in schools or what are the natural limits of gun control regulations or anything that would allow people to like share their opinions or their statistics or anything like that. But it'll more be in the direction of, you know, what does this issue mean to you? When did this start to become important to you? What is at stake for you personally in this issue? What are you afraid of? What you might gain, what you might lose if this issue gets decided either in your team's favor or the other team's favor. Um, and for me, this is like a really important moment and opportunity to slow down and invite people to like really observe how their words are are landing and I, I as the facilitator i want to watch everyone's reactions really closely i want to remind people that of the ground rules if necessary give them an opportunity to to process or to slow down or to recover if if i see that that's necessary you know in, in a moment just pause and allow people to like as a as a group be like hey i think x is having a problem with this or having i don't know if problems are the right, right word but having a moment let's um Let's take a pause until until somebody feels like they're ready. They can continue because the the responding is really about like the letting in and the experiencing of somebody's sharing. Because there's not going to be like, oh, I think you're wrong. There's just going to be like, how does that land for me in this moment? And people might need space at that moment while listening. So again, the goal is not agreement or convincing or even being exposed to arguments we could learn from. The goal is to be able to connect a stranger's belief with their life experiences and ultimately to understand what is at stake for someone else. And this is coming from some of the you know, mediation work I've been reading about recently of durable agreement and any kind of practical negotiated solution that's going to work for everyone has to, has to be in everybody's interest in some way. If not, they're going to reject it or fight against it for decades. As, as we've seen, you know, you can like pass a Supreme Court judgment on abortion that legalizes it and people can fight it for 50 years and try and, you know, pass something that's exactly the opposite because their interests were not fully heard. And what I would hope for, and this is way down the line, this is you know, what we're doing here is just the very beginning. It's just humanizing the other person. But ultimately down the line, it'll build enough of a relationship where you can then have conversations about policies and outcomes way, 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 way down the line. At this point, we just want to prevent the civil war. But eventually, we want to be able to like live together in a way that fits everybody's idea of, of the good and the true and the beautiful. Right, okay. So we do that. We do round one, we do round two, we do round three. In the successful case, people are like, whoa, that conflict, talking about it really brought us together. I had no idea. That'd be great. Um, round four, which I came up with in concert with these two city council members I met with last week when proposing this. And that went so well that they were like, whoa, I want to demo this on myself. And so we may try and get, I don't know if it's going to be this V1. Hopefully it'll be improved. Maybe it'll be a V2 or V3 by the time we get around to it and do it together uh, with uh, local, local elected officials to demo it and then see if they want to do this with their communities. If, if the idea that this is going to be helpful help reduce strife and increase goodwill in our local communities. So those are the first three rounds. That's the goal. And then round four is more like 
well, did it work? Did anybody care? What do people want to do? So, so here I have written, there'll be a short break after each round. I prefer that those breaks are held in silence. This is more logistics, I guess. But after round three, I would schedule a slightly longer break with some food, a little hospitality in there, some drink, encourage people to journal a bit, like digest, but maintain silence. And then around four, I want to just want to, I want to hear, well, what would you like to do next, given that you have this experience? And maybe the answer is, uh, I want to leave and go home. Maybe it's, I never want to do this again. Maybe it's, oh, I want to do more things like this on my own. Or maybe it's like, I want more facilitated conversations like this. Maybe it's like, I want training on how to have difficult conversations with people I love. Maybe it's like, I want to follow up with Bill about what he said about his daughter. Or I want to learn more about this person's life and this experience that they shared. Or I want everyone's email address and to write to them or send them a poem. Or, I don't know what it's going to be. So that's kind of why I wanted to add round four. And that could be quick. That could be like a two minute one, but it's really just like, what's the takeaway? And just so we get a sense immediately of how did this land? And is it, is it helping, you know? <laughs> so if the goal is preventing a civil war, which is my goal, success for me would be every person saying, I want to spend more time talking to this other person about their life where that person is someone who would have been on the other side of the civil war that they ordinarily would have been afraid of. Um, so that's, that's how I would measure success. Uh, okay. And that's the basic outline of it. Um, you know, for those of you who are interested in like the, the practicalities, this is how I imagine it happening. There the prep side. Uh, there's the old school way is that we send some information out to everybody in your neighborhood, either like putting, walking around, putting it in the mailboxes or actually getting their addresses and sending it. The new school way is setting up a website and maybe getting like the local government or I don't know, maybe just putting it out there on your, however you can contact your neighbors. But either way, there's kind of two steps in the marketing department. One is that people hear about the project. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. And the second is that they hear about a specific event and sign up for a specific event. So, I mean, there's going to be multiple ways that this happens. But in my mind, the first time they hear about it, we have to be very clear about what the event is and what the event is not. So there's gotta be some initial description of it. We have to immediately address the fears of emotional safety, physical safety, confidentiality, judgment that everyone's gonna have. Make it clear that it's not gonna be a debate or an argument or a teaching and that there's no right answer, no agenda, no claim to truth or any kind of verticality. Be clear that it's like this uninterrupted sharing thing. It's a chance, like what is the, I mean, really just like all of the mission stuff, like what is the point? The point is to use conflict as a tool to be closer and to build community, not to divide us any longer, but we're going to do that through addressing these divisive topics um, and see who's interested in that. And, you know, a successful outcome is like, oh, I'd like to try that. And then they sign up in some way. And then when we have an event, we can send it to all the people who have signed up with, um, you know, okay, it's on this topic. So it's on, this one's going to be about Israel, Palestine, or this one's going to be about, um, you know, reproductive rights for abortion and this is the date this is the time and if you're interested we need to know which ideological faction you're associated with or which way you lean so we can balance perspectives and if there's 12 people it can be six of each side or four of each side so if there's three different sides or something like that so nobody feels ganged up on i think that's the main piece of information when people sign up is you don't want to have like 11 of one and one of the other and then it's an opportunity to have them watch you know, maybe a five minute or 10 minute video that goes a little bit deeper into how we roll. So it's not a surprise and they can get used to and practice the, the ways of interacting that we're going to do and know what's expected of them. So those are things I need to make if we go do this. And then if we get enough signups that are balanced on that issue, then we can, you know, send them a confirmation and the location and all that. So that's as far as I've written now. I've thought of more of the details just like in my mind, in the deep recesses of the mind. But that's what I have written out. And uh, just a note of appreciation. Thanks for accompanying me on this journey. Let me know if you want to do this, if you have questions, what's helpful, what's unhelpful, what could be helpful. And we can, um, can co-create this. Thank you. <laughs>